Hello, uh, my name is Lauren, and this is my testimony of how I went from being an atheist of 17 years um, to New Age and then to Jesus. Um, at the recording of this video, I am 33 years old, and it's been about two years, almost three now, that I've been uh, saved or born again. And this happened early in 2021 after, um, after a divorce and uh, losing a job I really liked. So, and not to mention, you know, everything that happened in 2020. Um, so before we go into that, I just want to tell you a little bit about my backstory and basically where I came from. So um, I was raised Roman Catholic um, because my mom's side of the family is uh, Italian and that's pretty much the um the religion at the time or that everyone has um and then my father uh came from a protestant background but he wasn't practicing his faith um so because i was mostly raised catholic you know i did all the sacraments i did the child baptism the communion this confirmation um but i didn't really know or love god um, I went to church every now and then uh, out of obligation, and I didn't really understand much. I also went to Catholic school for not my entire grade school year uh, years, um, but pretty much from grade 4 to 12. That was all Catholic school. And, um, you know, my childhood wasn't the greatest, just like anyone. I feel like that's a common thing we can all... Um, relate to and so growing up I had um, absent parents um, when I was about eight or nine years old my parents divorced and I lived with my mother and my brother and because my mom was a single mom she was pretty much burdened with you know having to provide for the family so she was also not around um, so essentially my brother and I became latchkey kids and, um, I mean, we went to before and after school programs and take cares, um, but eventually we were on our own. So, uh, that being said, you know, my mom was also emotionally unavailable. So, um, that started a lot of different things for me too. And, um, growing up, uh, my dad got remarried and his uh, second wife and kids were all Jewish. So we were exposed to the Jewish culture. So, um, that was really cool to have that experience from, you know, a different side. But that being said too, um, we also faced a lot of discrimination because we weren't Jewish. Um, but you know, when you're a kid, everything is discrimination. Um, and then let's fast forward to grade eight. So grade eight, uh, 13 years old, uh, if, as most of you might know who are Catholic, that's when confirmation comes around. So I don't, I don't even really a hundred percent know what confirmation was about, but I do remember, um, you know, in the, in grade eight, I moved schools right in the middle of grade eight too. And I met this girl there and she was a really bad influence on me. But at the time, you know, I was just looking for friends because at this point I had already moved, like, I've already been to at least four or five different schools, so I was willing to take any friend at this point. And um, during the grade eight is when we did our confirmation, and um, there was a part in that confirmation where the priest says a bunch of different things where you're supposed to say, I do, too. So I remember distinctly, there was one line where it was something like, um, you know, I re refuse or I reject the devil and his, his, um, I don't know, his workings, whatever. I probably should have looked this up first, but I, I just remember saying, not saying I do to that. And I think at that point, because of this girl, um, and everything she was into, that's kind of where Satan entered my life. Um, and I say this because this girl... I think she was into Satanism and I say that because she actually gave me a satanic ritual book which I no longer have and actually stupidly gave away to someone else um which I hold a lot of guilt for because now that person's life is probably really bad um regardless though um 
I, that's pretty much the turning point when I was about 13 years old. That's when I stopped believing in God and religion and I got angry. Um, so fast forward to high school. Uh, I went to a Catholic high school, but I was an atheist and, um, I experienced a lot of deaths in the family for the first time around that point in my life. Um, so, you know, I hated God. I hated life. I hated my life. I hated my existence. Um, I basically became the school goth. Like I was black hair, black eyeliner, uh, listening to, uh, say 10. I want to say say 10, but I guess it could be, uh, metal music, um, with really eerie, tones to it. Like I just remember craving evil. And that's what I loved about the music was it just felt like it was filling me at that point. Um, but obviously not with something good. And during, um, high school, I definitely did not make a good impression with any of my teachers or fellow, um, schoolmates. And, um, this is the time in my life where I could say that I became very mentally ill. Um, I suffered with a lot of depression. Um, like I said, I hated my life. Um, I wouldn't say I was suicidal, but I had a lot of ideations. Like I really wanted to die. I hated my life. Um, you know, I took out all my anger on God um, I was known as the girl who would go around writing Jesus hates you everywhere because I just didn't like the idea. Like I could not accept the idea that anything or anyone could love you unconditionally. Um, so me saying this now and, and even just my whole story, it's like everything that I was in high school, I, w I would have hated myself now. I would be kicking my own butt right now if, uh, if she could see the future. So, um, even though I was, you know, angry and mis miserable, like I was hurting really badly. Um, I wasn't, I hated my circumstances, you know, growing up being a child of divorce, it was still unheard of, especially when I had moved to a community that was predominantly um, Italian and a predominantly, predominantly Catholic where a lot of people had their parents together. A lot of people didn't understand my situation. So I felt very alone and, um, uh, it's just, it was not a good time for me, but I did well in school cause I was one of those kids who was just naturally smart, not to brag, but, um, smart at least in, in terms of school, but one thing about high school that kind of stuck with me was my group of friends. So I had a one particular girl in my group of friends um, who was a Christian, and she was a Christian amongst Catholics. So at the time, I didn't really know there was a distinction. Like, I remember she would bring her own Bible. I remember she um, used to wear, like, bracelets that had those like cute sayings about like you know like WWJD or I think there was one that said uh, frog fully rely on God which still sticks with me and um, I was mean I was really mean to her and I remember asking her all these questions basically just being like how can you believe in God how can you like but like it's all brainwashing you know and stuff like that and I remember her faith was just so unwavering at that time I mean she was probably terrified of me too um but she was able to answer my questions and you know I'm I'm, I'm really surprised even you know looking back now that she she didn't like use it as a reason to not be friends with me and um you know at the time I didn't know it, but she eventually became such a big part in my walk with Christ now. And I will get to that soon. So let's skip to after high school. Um, after high school, you know, everybody went off their own ways. So I went to college. I became, uh, I went into graphic design. Um, and I was also still struggling with my mental health issues. Uh, and my depression. But at that point, this was kind of right before, you know, people started being all like, break the stigma. You know, it was still really hard to shoulder depression, um, kind of be aware of it, but also be in denial of it. But for me, it was more like, I just didn't want to be a cliche. 
but I was. <laughs> so unfortunately, um, I chose to ignore it for a long time until about my mid twenties when I was at, I was working a corporate job and, um, I had, I won't even say it was a breakdown, but I had a, a point where I was just like, I've had enough of my own crap. Like I need to do something. I need help. So I went to my doctor, uh, got a referral for a psychiatrist, had a psych eval, was told that I had a uh, major depressive disorder. And I wasn't really satisfied with that because it just kind of felt like a blanket statement. Um, so she referred me to this adult outpatient date program and I did that for some time. Like I had to take short-term disability off of work, um, to attend to this. And then also I sought my own therapist, um, a psychotherapist and I was with her for six years. So I was very fortunate enough to be working a job where I was able to afford weekly, therapy sessions because they was not cheap. And, um, if you don't know, um, psychotherapists, especially if they are registered social workers are not covered by insurance. So everything was out of pocket. Um, and through her, I was actually able to find a better diagnosis for what I had at the time. Um, and it was called dysthymia or I think it's called PDD now, persistent depressive disorder, which by the way, I have overcome. Thank God. Um, but yeah, during this time too, I actually ended up quitting that job at the, the corporate, um, place I was working at. And, um, I went back to school to become a paramedic because I wanted to help people. I hated sitting behind a desk and feeling like I served no purpose. And, um, I was also working a lot of retail jobs where I was actually serving people. So whether it was like customer service or, um, food, um, I missed that oddly enough. And so I needed something that would serve a higher purpose. And like, I had an obsession with the human body in terms of, um, helping people get better from being sick or being in pain, being hurt. And that's pretty much why I wanted to go do that. But that actually didn't work out for me either. Um, at the time I had started seeing my, uh, now, I guess he's my now ex-husband, but we've, that's when we first started seeing each other. And, um, he lives in the States. He's in, on the West coast. And, uh, instead of dedicating my life to my studies, I stupidly dedicated to a boy and I decided, you know, I'm. I'm going to just drop out, move over there, and then go back to school there. I can continue there because I'm sure it's probably easier to get into school in, in the U.S. So, um, unfortunately, um, I was incredibly naive at the time that he promised a life together. Um, uh, so I wasn't able to, um, to basically pursue that. So I had put all my hopes and dreams on hold, uh, for what felt like nothing. And <clears throat> at the time, um, he also became a really bad influence on my life. Um, because it's just the, I like, I don't want to talk any bad about him because right now I don't harbor any negative feelings about him, but the period of time that we spent together was not a good part of my life either. I think that was probably my rock bottom, um, where, you know, I started doing drugs, uh, especially psychedelic ones and pretty regularly. And, um, my family didn't like me either. My family didn't like him either. And they never even met each other, um, because of certain circumstances. Uh, so basically I was just looking for a way out of my miserable life and my existence. And this was in concurrence with the therapy I was seeking at the time. So there was one summer where I spent a couple months with him and that's when we decided to elope. So I was about 28 when that happened. And, uh, that day that we got married, I literally got back in my car and drove back to Canada and, um, you know, I thought things were looking up for my future. So we were beginning the 
the process of trying to get a visa for me to basically immigrate to the States. So let's fast forward to 2020. Um, this was when I was 29 turning 30. And um, just like everyone else, this year did not leave anyone unscathed. Um, so we were in what I thought was the process for getting a visa. And early 2020, him and I got into an argument um, basically around, you know, like I was trying to help advance this process and I'd be like, okay, we need this. We need, I need your, this ID. I need this. I need that. And he wasn't giving it to me. So I became really frustrated because I'm just like, but why? Like, isn't this what, listen, isn't this what we're supposed to be trying to do? Like, you know, why are you being so difficult? Like, why is it that you just, you know, you're trying to take control of things, but you're not actually doing them. But, you know, it just, it, it was a point where we almost basically called it quits. And so we decided, okay, you know what, let's just put this process on hold. Uh, we'll figure it out later. And then a couple weeks later, everything shut down. So it, it was kind of weird how that all played out because everything shut down. It's like, of course, like everybody's just like, what's going on? We don't know what's happening. So obviously, probably the visa process is going to be delayed anyways. So it's just weird how it all played out like that. So, um, because I had so much time to myself now because everything was shut down and, um, we were all sitting here doing nothing basically. Um, I decided during the pandemic to take everything I had learned in, um, therapy over the past couple years and actually put them into place and implement them. Um, so I spent a lot of time smoking weed and this was the point where I would talk to myself because there was, what I found really addictive about smoking was just the, um, the way it would make me think. I really loved the way it would make me think at the time because I was not able to think that clearly because I was always anxious. I was always depressed. So I decided to work on these fears that I had because I really, I was really tired of just being afraid of everything, especially with everything that was going on in the world. Right. Um, so I sat with myself and I'm like, why am I afraid of this? Why am I afraid of this? Let's explore this. Let's explore that. So one of those things that I wanted to explore was my spirituality because, um, there was this activity that I remember doing at one of those outpatient um, day hospital things that I did for my mental health. It was an activity where there was, um, it would look like a thermometer and it had every little aspect of your life. Um, if you know anything about holistic wellness, you know, there's things like, um, you know, physical health, mental health, relational health, spirituality. Um, I think there's like environmental or something like that. And the goal of it was to color in like how well we think we do with each one. And I remember spirituality was the one where I had nothing because I was just like, nope, not going there. I don't give a crap about that stuff, whatever. So that's something that stuck out with me for a while. And I was like, you know what, why don't I actually explore this? Like, why am I so afraid of spirituality? And that's when I got into new age spirituality. And um, this was actually right before uh, my husband and I called it quits. So in the summer of 2020, um, our communication was getting really bad and um, it got to a point where we had to just end the relationship. Um, and at the time, I didn't want it to happen because I was a child of divorce. I did not want to also be divorced. So, you know, it broke my heart, of course, because I, I tried so hard not to be my parents and I became exactly like them. So sorry, mom and dad, <laughs> but, um, it was a very interesting time because being long distance and trying to orchestrate a divorce, uh, cause we got married where he lives, uh, was very difficult or very challenging. So I had to, you know, leave everything in his hands. I filled out as much as I could paperwork wise and I couriered it to him 
and um, left it in his hands to take care of. And it took him about a month to just even drop it off at the court, which frustrated me. But I knew it was out of my control, so all I could do was really focus on healing at the time because it hurt. <laughs> and then, finally, after he did... Um, I dropped the papers off. Within two weeks later, I found out he was with another woman. And, you know, it obviously that breaks your heart too because you're just like, oh, wow, he's done one relationship and now he's into another one. But then I go to find out that they, they were together for months, basically around the time that we almost called it quits uh, before the pandemic. And I will tell you, I've never that's probably one of the biggest betrayals I've ever felt in my life. And that really sucked. But this video isn't about my relationship and what happened specifically. But, um, you know, it, it really hurt at the time. And, but it was like the timing of everything, the fact that I was working on healing, um, the fact that I was implementing all the things that I was, that I was learning through therapy and even just being in, in a session with my therapist, you know, a couple times a month. Um, it was just crazy how it all just came together. And normally a situation like this, something that would have destroyed me in the past, um, I was able to actually pull through. And again, this was before I knew God, before I was born again. So I, even though now I absolutely thank God for that and everything at the time, you know, I was just like, you know, the universe. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so as a way to heal from my divorce, that's how I got into new age um, spirituality because I still wasn't ready yet to accept God. Like I was just like, okay, like I don't have to, it doesn't have to be Jesus, like, but it can be something still spiritual. Like I should still work on it. Basically, I, I realized, you know, like I was just looking for answers really. So that's when I decided to get into things like numerology, astrology, uh, birth charts, um, journaling and meditation. I became obsessed with crystals and using them for ritualistic purposes. Um, I was exploring a lot of different concepts, esoteric knowledge. I became obsessed with Gaia TV and all the things they have on there. Um, you know, I would just follow a lot of people that would claim to have connections with aliens or channeled messages and, um, things from like 5D beings, I think it was, and angels. Um, I would listen, I would get into like meditation, listen to like binaural beats, uh, try to open my third eye and decalcify the pineal gland, uh, and, you know, balance the chakras, um, I also got into tarot cards, uh, bought myself, I think I had two decks, I learned how to interpret them, and then every single day I would do readings, and I would reflect on my day and be like, how did this card kind of play into my day, um, try to like make connections that way, um, but you know, I, I won't lie, these things were such a huge source of comfort for me at the time. And that's why it was so addictive because it just, I just wanted those answers so badly about everything that I was going through and what was next for my life and where I was supposed to go from then. You know, all these things that I now seek in God because I know he has what's best for me in my life. Um, another thing I did that kind of weirded me out was I had a at distance Reiki session did done on me. And there was something that this chick said to me that just stood out with me and did not sit right with me. And then learning about what Reiki really is later on, um, it all kind of made sense. So I remember her making a comment about how my spirit guides were very fond of my ex-husband. And I, I was baffled. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, he, he literally cheated on me. He literally tried to start another family with this other woman. How could, how could anybody possibly think that, be fond of that? But once you realize that, you know, these people are actually speaking with demons and that are masquerading as angels of light, um, 
it made sense because of course somebody who has that that spirit within them you know of course they're going to be fond of that so I know now that you know these are things that I should have never messed with because it did um it did open portals to um not so great things in my life um you know, I also, one thing I forgot to mention too is, um, I did mushrooms and, you know, I had a, I had a lot of profound healing experiences with those. Like that is still something to me that I'm just like, but like I healed so much for them, but it's not even something that I want to do anymore. But the way I see it is like God was using something bad for my good and, you know, but I still feel like other people could experience similar good things too, but that's not the message here. Um, so, you know, during this time, I was also experiencing a lot of sleep paralysis and attacks in my dreams. And a lot of the time you don't really notice until afterwards when you wake up and you're like, oh my goodness, what the heck was that? Um, but I don't know, like there, there was this one where it took on the face of my ex-husband and I knew it was an incubus spirit. And this, um, I think this happened right as I became born again too, because I do remember yelling for Jesus in my dream and it stopped and I woke up. Um, but yeah, I experienced a lot of sleep paralysis too. Um, a lot of things jumping on me. So, I have not experienced any of those ever since I have come to Christ. So if you mm -hmm. don't believe in this sort of things, I'm sorry, but they do exist. Like you can't mess with the spirit world and not expect the spirit world to mess back with you. Let's take it to the end of 2020 in December. That's uh, when the divorce finalized. Um, because in his state, uh, you only need three months to wait, um, in order for it to finalize. Whereas here where I live, um, it takes a year. So I was actually very lucky in that case. So I felt like I just had like a clean slate and, um, you know, I bought a cake and some like sparkling grape juice and I celebrated because why not? You know, it was a shame that I had to go through such an experience and waste, you know, marriage on someone like that because, you know, I know the value of it now and, you know, it just, it, it leaves a mark on you. It leaves a scar on you. Um, but you know, I'm hoping, um, you know, it, it, it's not held against me basically. Like I know I made a mistake. I know I, I'm just as responsible for everything that happened to, I'm not perfect, but, um, it, it definitely, Go, overcoming all of that and coming out triumphant just just made me really proud of myself because you know as someone who who hated myself for a long period of time and I was learning to love myself overcoming something like that is something to be proud of so let's fast forward to 2021 um you know during the whole pandemic um I was one of those people questioning things um, and you know, I've always been into conspiracy theories, uh, definitely, uh, September 1-1 is the one that, uh, got me started. Um, but you know, I never made the connections until this all happened. And uh, one great thing about, um, going through my divorce, uh, was, you know, being awakened to deception and manipulation and just learning you know, sociopathic and narcissistic behavioral tendencies. Like I got really into human behavior and psychology ever since that whole thing happened. But I just learned so much about just human behavior and seeing it replicated in the world. You know, it's like, if this can happen to me from like my ex-husband, it can definitely happen with the government. <laughs> so, um, you know, like I could just see it everywhere now. And in my search for knowledge and for love and for understanding, um, I explored quite a bit of them, a lot of different things. And at the time I 
just like probably anybody, I have a bunch of um, online friends and there was one in particular that just really helped me see things differently. And she's really good at just questioning everything. And so she started showing me things about even new age because her and I were kind of on a similar journey in terms of the new age thing. So she started showing me things about uh, new age spirituality kind of being a deception too. And, um, you know, it didn't take long for me to be able to agree with that because I, cause I could see it everywhere, right? Like it was so fresh to me, but it was like, I could see it everywhere. And, um, this was like pretty much the moment where Jesus became real to me because, um, it's that fray or that, um, the, um, verse in second Corinthians eleven fourteen about, you know, for even Satan, disguises himself as an angel of light and um you know there's black magic there's white magic and people think the white magic is like somehow superior or better or it's the good to the bad mat to the black evil magic but it's not it's not and that's why it's so deceiving because it's so addictive it's so alluring it's like it's so comforting. And I know this because like I said, I went through this whole new age thing where I was like seeking answers and it just brought me so much healing, but there was still such an emptiness within it. So, um, this became such a pivotal moment in my journey because this was basically where I realized everything I thought I knew was a lie. You know, being an atheist, um, you know, hating God, running away from Jesus, because I just, everything that I believed in as a teenager, I realized that it was all wrong and that I was deceived from that moment. (laughs) And I just remember being filled with like, like a, like buzzing or just, you know, when you come to a realization, it's almost like a blood rush, like a head rush, just So eventually I decided to read the Bible. I started with the book of Revelation because, you know, a lot of people were comparing um, what was happening to, you know, the end times, right? And I mean, it's, I think it's still relevant for now, but um, I did that. And then I think I started back up in Genesis and then Exodus, Um, but then you know, I ended up contacting my friend, um, the one that I knew back in high school, the one, the, uh, the Christian one that, um, left such a impression on me. (laughs) I mean, her and I kept in touch because, um, after we graduated high school, uh, within a year or two, she ended up moving to Sweden. And so we kept in touch and she was the first person I pretty much told. And I was so excited. You know, like, I was so glad that God kept us in each other's life uh, for so long (laughs) because, um, because just seeing just how perfectly designed and like how amazing God is by placing certain people in your life, whether you knew their purpose for you at the time or not. So... Um, it was just really amazing to share that moment with her because I knew she was one of, she would be the only person at the time who would actually be excited about that. And, you know, I'm so glad because, um, she was the one who helped me get baptized too, even though she lives in Sweden. Some of her family still lives here and we were able to arrange a water baptism in Lake Ontario of all places because all the churches were still closed at the time, uh, including the one that, um, I go to now. Um, and I think that was the most beautiful too, because it's like in nature and like, I love nature. So, uh, the way it worked out, you know, it was absolutely amazing. And, um, it was her recommendation to, to start reading the gospels, which are the first four books of the new Testament. So I actually ended up reading the entire new Testament in two weeks because like my heart was just so on fire for God at the time that, you know, I just wanted to know more and more. And, and the more I read, the more I came to realize that everything that I was looking for in new age spirituality and any other belief system that I have explored in my past, 
um, it was everything that I was running away from. It was all in God, you know, that unconditional love that everybody is searching for. It, it's God. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, the, like, there's literally, you know, like one of my first, or sorry, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is in 1 John 4, where it's, you know, it's literally just like, God is love. <laughs> You know, and if you don't know God, you don't know love because God is love. You know, we have our ideas of what love is and, but we don't realize that some of the ideas that we have actually end up hurting people or they're more self-serving than they are selfless. But, you know, even just the whole gospel, the whole story of Jesus, that is just like true, unconditional or what the Greek call agape love. Like, it's so beautiful. Um, anyways, so... <laughs> Um, the reason why I did the water baptism is because, um, even though I did the Catholic baptism where you have the sprinkling of the water as a baby, that doesn't count. It's actually not biblical. Um, and baptism is a personal choice. It's something that you do as an outward symbol to your faith, right? Um, and a lot of people don't realize too, like even Jesus got baptized and he didn't do that until he was 30. So, um, I was 31 at the time, but yeah, it was really cool that it was kind of like, um, a similar thing. Um, so, you know, after that, that's kind of like when I began my walk with, uh, God and, um, now I go to church, um, pretty regularly like two times a week, mostly. Um, and I also serve for my church. Um, we are very lucky to have a cafe and I am one of the, um, supervisors or leads, uh, helping to manage the cafe. So it's been amazing because I have cafe experience and I love to serve. I have always had a servant heart and, um, you know, I'm just really amazed by all the things God has done for me in my life over these past couple of years. Um, everything has honestly gotten so much better. Like I was able to pull myself out of depression and anxiety. Um, I was able, I'm more able to be positive and to be inspiring and to use my life as a testimony. And I have been put in positions to encourage others and to, you know, give back. And I am so grateful and I am so always amazed by just looking back how well orchestrated, how perfectly designed, um, my whole life has been because of God, you know, and that being said, life hasn't gotten easier either. It's just, it's gotten easier to handle and the trials and the challenges are a lot more enjoyable because of, you know, knowing who my creator is. And how, you know, like every trial serves a greater purpose for my life and my character. And, you know, I was, I'm looking forward to what he has in store for me. And I have definitely become a new person because of this. Like I used to be one of those people that had, you know, blue hair, green hair, red hair. Like I was very much a liberal too. So I'm a completely different person um, you know, and I'm, I'm so grateful and, you know, like, I hope that other people can experience this too, because it's the best thing I ever did for my life. It wasn't easy either. I lost friends, um, not even just because of my personal choices, but, um, because of this and you know what, that's, that's fine. It is what it is, but I've learned to become a person who doesn't care anymore because I know the right people won't care either and the right people will have the same mindset. So if you made it this far, uh, thank you so much for listening to my testimony. If you have any questions, please let me know. And um, I really hope this encourages you to keep going on and to keep searching for God. Um, and please open the door to your heart to him because he is knocking and he 
is the type of person who will leave the flock, the 99, the, the herd of 99 sheep just to come looking for you because he loves you so much. Because he loves me so much. And I couldn't even believe that, that someone could, you know, especially everybody in my life growing up didn't show that towards me, knowing that there's something out there greater for you that actually loves you and will give you all that unconditional love that you are seeking for. It is found in Christ and he can truly do the impossible. And if he was able to turn someone like me into a believer, he can do the same for you. And uh, there's no no brainwash, no brainwashing involved. Um, the brainwashing is is the stuff telling you that there is no God, and that he's not. Then the, that there's multiple ways to heaven. I'm sorry, but um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you will thank him um, for all the things he can do in your life to make it make it what you desire. So. Thank you. <laughs>